Hi everyone, it is Miss Chanel here. Um, what I'm going to do in this very quick and brief video is give you a rundown on the CSEC Spanish mark scheme, or more specifically the mark scheme from the modern languages syllabus. But that is the syllabus that governs Spanish, French, as well as Portuguese for the CSEC exam, all right? So I'm going to explain essentially what it takes to actually pass the exam and get really good grades. Okay, so we're gonna look at, right now in this video, how to get good grades for paper two, all right? Because what you're concerned about in the Mark Me course is being able to get a really good grade in paper two. At the end of the day, although you still have paper one and you still have the oral exam, paper two is where the majority of the marks um, come from from your exam okay so you really need to have a very solid 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 mark when you complete the that particular exam a okay, that particular paper all right so if you know as i said paper two is the most important well the exam paper with the most marks but it's also the written paper so fully written paper it's the only fully written, fully written paper that you get for spanish all right there are four sections the very first section is directed situations. After it's up, then it is contextual dialogue. And the very last question you do is the ever lovely reading comprehension. All right, I love reading comprehension, it's always fun. So for directed situations, you're always gonna get 10 questions. Each question is going to be worth three marks. The total for this question is, for this particular section, is 30 marks. Now, here is what you need to know for this section. This is what's going to guide you for this section. All right. Okay. Now you have to ensure that your responses are appropriate to the situation. So you know, this is the section where you get these things like um, these setups that are like your family's about to leave home and you realize you left something very important. Um, you, you realize you left something very important and you want to send a text to somebody to collect it, right? What does the text message say, right? So you have to make sure that you give a, and this is very important, one line sentence, it's one sentence, right? One sentence, very brief, very to the point, very concise, that gives the actual information, all right? So it's like probably like, um, I'm doing this in English to so make sure we understand. So in that situation I gave, you probably see something like, Okay, um, please bring my bottle of water. I'm assuming some bottle of water that was so crucial, right? So, por favor, puedes traer mi botella de agua. All right? So it's going to be that simple, right? Now, for you to get that, it must be, again, appropriate to the situation. So you can, and that table is marked as appropriateness. This is one of the two. Yeah, two major categories that they look at for directed situations specifically. All right, so you're going to get three marks once you have all elements of the situation, including and the meaning is adequately communicated. That means you hit everything in terms of the function. So if the situation is centered upon um, you borrowing a particular item, um, then you use the specific words that suggest, hey, can you lend me this? Can I borrow this? With this, um prestarme or puedes um puedo your oh how do you say borrow lo siento english is borrowing me again english is in my head lo siento but let's say we're working with land uh puedes prestarme el cuaderno right you've got the element for what it is that you want to um borrow and you've used the word for borrowing right use it adequately if i were going to use land which is pedir prestado it's it will be um sorry to borrow which is pedir prestado then it'll be more like quiero pedir prestado tu cuaderno right so this this sentence will be a little different but you understand what i'm saying is that it's always got to be appropriate and it's always got to be. so if you leave out anything so like in that situation if i left out what i wanted to borrow then i'm going to give you probably a two right two marks that's all you could get for each response if it is you well obviously if you leave a blank you don't get zero but um 
if you if you left out anything more you'd still also get zero because for appropriateness you i believe you only get three or two there is no one mark it's not possible to get one mark for this section also interesting to note you see there's another table that's my correctness of expression this deals with any errors in grammar vocab and spelling so what happens with this particular section once they've checked once I've checked how appropriate your response is, I now need to check for errors. If you have anywhere between zero to three errors, then you're safe. I'm not going to take away marks. But for the six errors, I start to take away marks. So basically, let's not make any errors. Why not? Why not? Right, so that's section one. Okay, now section two is the informal letter. I think this is a really good section. I know a lot of you all might not like this section, but I think it's a really solid section once you understand the strategy, all right? Anyway, for the marks as well, what you're gonna get is 30 marks for this section. 30 marks for writing a letter that's 130 to 150 words. Um, you've gotta make sure it's in the word limit and you've got to make sure that you use the cues. The cues are the key. Make sure you use the cues. But once you've done it correctly, um, within the word limit, you're not going to get a mark or anything beyond the word limit. A uh, top ranked essay, which would be, sorry, a top ranked letter, which would be 24 to, 20, to 30 marks, you should have well organized ideas that logically develop all points that clearly express, which means that you're getting a beginning, a middle, and end. That's what that basically means. The sequence makes sense. All right. And, and guess what you use for the sequence? You're going to use the cues that you've been given to create that sequence. Trust me, it's gonna save you, and trust me, it really works. Then you need to show ensure that you're using correct grammar, range of idioms, vocab, and structures. Now, that goes across the board for every single thing you do in Spanish. Paper one, paper two, paper, um, not paper three, but oral. You need to ensure that you're using correct grammar, correct vocabulary. vocabulary. So this is a really good opportunity as well for you to build up on your personal vocabulary banks. To make sure that you're good at standing for the um for this part do not be afraid of being a bit simple in your sentences that is okay that is quite okay um i know especially if it is you do well like in english and you're accustomed to writing nice long flowing letters sometimes this is a challenge all right but stick to answering the cues i cannot i cannot stress that enough stick to answering the cues and stick to ensuring that the cues connect and still properly all right and please note that they allow for an occasional inaccuracy so the, you can still get between you can still get a 24 with a bit of an error you can still get 24 with a bit of an error all right that is still okay that is still all right but again you don't want to have too many errors they said occasional obviously somebody's gonna get 30 is probably not gonna have any errors on your sheet so please be mindful of that okay then contextual dialogue that's section three all right so this section is 20 marks and it's a total of 80 to 100 words that you need to include now the lovely thing about this section is that like the letter you get cues so because you get cues you already getting an idea of what order you need to respond to the person all right the second advantage of contextual dialogue is that hey you get half the dialogue so because you get half the dialogue then that means you just need to respond and again what are you using to respond the cues so you've got to make sure you understand the dialogue you've given and you understand when your responses based on the cues are going to fit into the dialogue right wonderful so once you look at this again top rank for this is 16 to 20 and uses all, you see the very first thing they said is uses all cues well. That is a huge help. So once you've used the cues well, then you're inside. 
um, organizers and develops ideas responses using language that flows naturally. So you hear that word again, flows naturally. So as you go from Q to Q, it must make sense, it must flow naturally. The responses as well must gel or flow naturally with the dialogue we've already been given. All right, this must just make sense. Um, why don't proficient use of idioms, structures, and vocabulary? Yes, you don't want to repeat vocabulary. Same thing for, for um, letters. You don't want to keep repeating the same vocab. You don't want to keep using the same words. So like, if you know, um, we'll give you an example. So like, if you want to say, in my opinion, right? You can say, in my opinion, opino, creo que, me parece que. You can use all of those things, right? Um, or like with, to say you like something, you can say me gusta, you can say me encanta, right? So you've got options. You don't want to be using the same thing all the time. You could even say for liking, you can say mi preferido, mi favorito, right? You don't have to use the same word or the same structure all the time. Change it up a little bit, right? Um, so this is what it takes. And again, of course, idioms, idioms make sense. Because sometimes even in the dialogue, sometimes they ask for something like a greeting. Buenos dias, buena tarde, bienvenido, hola, those are all acceptable, all right? And again, don't cross the people with limits. Yeah, it's very serious about it with limits. And reading comp, I love reading comprehension, right? So anybody who's done with me before will know I really love reading comprehension. Um, reading comprehension is also a great opportunity for you to practice actual reading for paper three. That's what I do with my students. You get a reading comprehension passage, um, you're home practicing it, but in the exam room. So you can even use that after the exam to read out loud and practice your fluency and your intonation and all these things. However, back to reading comp for paper two, this is normally a really cool, cute, funny story. All right? It's normally very lighthearted. So what you have to do is make sure you answer in English. So that's the tricky part. That Answering English does not make it easier. It actually levels it up quite a bit. So you've got to one, read it, understand it, see, understand it, and um, be able to respond in English in complete sentences. If I see sentences in English that are horrible, that are incomplete, that are, I can't make sense of what you're saying, I will not, you will be marked out. All right, this is not a one will reply, although it's in English. I need a proper sentence. Yes, it's the same as well, not just my shout out. All right, so this is just a mark scheme for reading comp. It's very simple because reading comp is 20 marks to 10 questions. Each question is either one, two, or three marks. I used to think that if you see three marks, you probably write three things, but that, or if it's two marks, it's probably what two, th two things they need, but that hasn't proven consistent with from reading comp to reading comp right so what i suggest is make sure you write the full answer um i will tell you that normally the very last question is asking you to explain some explain a concept or to give your opinion passage that's definitely going to be a little more lengthy again it's in english so no worries um but yeah, so that is it for these particular questions. Um, this is a really good paper, but it does require practice. So I really want you to take the opportunity to really give your best attempt when you're doing these. Um, you could do it under exam conditions. That's why I suggest do it under exam conditions, each part of the paper that you get. And then when you review it, because ideally you should probably review it, um, take an opportunity to look for vocabulary, things like that. Probably take a look at it again before you submit it to me. All right. I want you to also have an opportunity to send your best work. Um, at the same time, don't overthink it and don't try to spend a whole day doing a paper. The exam is, I think, two and a half hours. So you want to still try and get it done in that frame of time. All right. I hope that advice was not too confusing. Again, I am Miss Chanel. Um, the language coach for you for Spanish and I'm so grateful that you are part of this course. I do hope I can sincerely help you feel more confident and put you in a better position for the exam this year. Buena suerte.